Well, today certainly has been a, uh, a heavy day here in our city, in the city of Bernie. Um, those of you, uh, most of you uh, probably know just about the events of the, uh, uh, the alarm of an active shooter or a bombing in Bernie High School or a champion high school and the lockdown of the school district. And, um, you know, honestly, being, uh, being up here at the church and uh, circling up with the staff and, and praying and uh, drawing near to the Lord, your, your emotions run the gamut uh, as a parent, uh, as a pastor, uh, having uh, uh, other staff members that have a child on campus. And your emotions run from, from fear uh, and, and then you, you pray for safety uh, to uh, hating evil and the absolute destruction that it causes. Um, and then circling back to trusting God. And so on Wednesday nights during this time, we've been walking through a, a little series that uh, what Jesus demands of the world uh, his commands throughout Scripture. And we, we've looked at be born again and repent. Last week, Chad filled in and did repent. Uh, and tonight, uh, the, the one that we are doing is, is perfect for uh, what, uh, what we endured today and, and the heaviness of our heart uh, because Jesus demands that we come to him, right? He says, come to me. This is one of his demands from Scripture, right? You must come to him. I'll be sharing four verses with us real quick, and I want to leave some time at the very end to, to pray, but I want you to listen, and I want you to allow these Scriptures to wash over you. Matthew 11, uh, beginning in verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, you can see the rest of the context there. I have it in the verse, right? Those of us that are stung by the weariness of life, that is your own sin, others' sin, or the circumstances of life. Jesus makes a call, a petition. He calls to us, come and find rest for your soul. Cease striving and know that I am God. Here he offers an exchange of yokes, right? A yoke is, is the, the bar that goes over the back of an oxen. It is, it is the slave driver. You see, because the current one that you have is the weight of your sin and it is the weight of the world and it bears down upon you. And he offers to exchange masters because put his yoke upon you Understanding that he is in control. And by the way, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Now, it doesn't mean that the Christian life is easy because this world is not your home. But it does mean that when he is the king, that when he is master, that he gives rest and peace to your soul because he is God. Come to me. Look at these next two verses because Jesus, uh, John chapter seven, verse 37, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And then just a chapter before that, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Isaiah 55, uh, verse 2. Sorry, I don't have this on the screen, but, but God is crying out. He says, why do you spend your money on that which is not food and that which is not bread and that which, is, that which doesn't satisfy you? You see, Jesus is calling us to come to him for spiritual water, for spiritual food. 
The reality is, is you need air, you need food, you need water. And the same way that you need those things, you need Jesus. And he demands that you come to him. But his demand is that you would come to the fountain of life and drink. He demands this. Come to the fountain of living water and have life, life overflowing, life that satisfies. Catch this, this is an incredible statement. God is not satisfied to lure your obedience with warnings and laws. God is not satisfied to lure your obedience with warnings and laws. Rather, above that, he calls you to himself, to himself. He doesn't just command you, there's going to be consequences. I'm holy. There's going to be consequences. No, no, no. He is not satisfied with that. He wants to lure you to himself. He demands it. Right, like a father who is who's standing below and a child in a burning building, and the father says, Jump to me. Jump to me. But let me read this third verse because there is a tragedy that sin and spiritual blindness is that people do not come. Look at John chapter five. Verse 40, again, I give you the context ahead of it. It says, but you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Jesus actually grieves this. In Matthew 23, he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how how I have longed to gather you together as a hen does her chicks, but you were unwilling Why don't people come to him? Because they don't want to. At the end of the day, because they refuse to. Because they do not want him. And they are blind and they are enslaved to their love of other things. They love the darkness rather than the light. And believer, if you are here, you know that that was you before the gospel broke through into your heart, before the Holy Spirit gave you eyes to see that that was you. And maybe you're here and you're lost tonight. And Jesus says, come to me. He is near. And if you are a believer You hear these commands and you hear, keep coming to me with everything, right? So let's just spend a few moments and let's press into this idea. How magnificent is this picture? Is this command? Is this demand? He is not satisfied that you would only come out of rules and obedience, but rather that you would come to him. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come to you. You are the one who has living water for our soul. You are the one, you are the only one that, that meets our every need. And so we come We come in the name of Jesus. We pray that your spirit would would reveal and continue to open our eyes and show us more and more of you. We want to use the, the will that you have given us and now a heart that beats for you. God, to to continue to come, to daily come, to moment by moment come. As your word says, to abide in you. We come to you because we are, we are following your command, but we are coming to your feet because you are the lover of our soul and you are the only one who satisfies. And we pray that truth on a day like today with a light shining with intention towards our community, aware of the 
darkness and the fear and the hurt that is all around us. King Jesus, we pray for your kingdom to come that your name would be high and lifted up, that the hope that is found in you, that the light that is found in you will overwhelm the darkness. That serious contemplation on a day like today with, with, the, with the absolute fear and horrors of what can take place in our society, right here in Bernie, of sin and the consequences of sin, Father, that would cause our eyes to look to you and collectively as a people, we would come to Jesus. That there would be revival that would break out, that there would be young people who are so confused and so torn up over the messiness of this world that they would look to you, that they would come to you, that they would hear this command, and that we as your people would model that and that we would shine your light. We pray that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done, and that you would use us in an awesome way to display your light into the dark. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, God bless you guys.